listening to your voice. And that's been interesting being here this morning and hearing the different presentations from people here in the UK and from around the world. Now, my story. Two years ago, I wouldn't be able to be here because I would be a teacher in a classroom in a school. But just over two years ago, I had a big emotional meltdown. And when I had that meltdown, I decided I didn't want to go back into the classroom. I was fortunate, we've been hearing today about the NHS and how the NHS works. I was fortunate because my care, now when I talk to other people, I realized it was joint up. My GP knew me well enough to know that what I was going through when I turned up in his doctor's surgery, crying like a little baby, he knew this was not me. And some patients, some doctors, they didn't know my care, would have sent me off to maybe a hospital or give me really strong medication. But my GP knew that wouldn't work for me. So he sent me off and said, you need to now go and find something that you can do that's not gonna impact your health. After 25 years in teaching, to go and have to start my career again doing something quite daunting. And part of this journey then made that I had to go out networking. If you work in a job normal, you know, in terms of teaching, networking is something you don't do. So I find myself not far from here in the main Olympian um, setting, turning up in, um, I think it was end of November, December, and attended this business event. And when I attended this business event, as I said, I didn't know the protocol, I didn't know how things worked. But I went through and I started to get to know certain people. And as I started to get to know certain people, I started to share with them my journey, where I started from. But initially, I didn't tell them that I had this meltdown. I talk about why it was important as employers, why they need to look after their staff, because that's what had caused me to have my meltdown at work. And that's what I was focusing on. But as more and more people got to know me, they said, Ruth, there's more to your story than what you're actually sharing. So eventually one day, I was at a networking event, and the person there shared what happened to her. And as she shared, then I realized it's time for me to open up that I'd had this meltdown, which is why I was out doing the work I'm doing. And as time went on, and as I met more and more people networking, they encouraged me to go and share my story, and to go and share what I want to do now. As I said to you, I was in education. And one of the things that I trained up was to do a coach and training. And as I was going out, more and more people were saying, Ruth, what model of coaching are you using? Now, anyone who does coaching, they know about the role model and other models of coaching. But I realised as I was talking with other people, I developed my own coaching strategy. And this coaching strategy is easy to remember. If you think about the word steps, S-T-E-P-S. -E so the first part of the coaching strategy is start. You've got to make a decision that you want to do something different. We've been hearing today, this month, we've been hearing today about new changes that's happening in the NHS. Why were those changes put in place? Because the old system was a bit for purpose. So something new had to take place. T, we had three people here just talking. Maybe before today, they didn't actually know in detail what each other did. But they came together and started to share what they did. And that way now they can join up and work more collaboratively with each other. E, emotions. When we're having, going through changes, there's lots of emotional things that take place within us. And we can decide whether or not we're going to be open about those changes or whether or not we're going to hide behind, you know, a wall.